Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Well, everybody, and welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. We've got a great show for you tonight. You know, we're always trying to find amazing new Disney friends who have an incredible spin in their corner of the Disney world. Tonight is no different. Our friend Adam Grannis is from California. Uh, he's a Disneyland guy. Uh, he's a graphic designer, Disneyland's home park, and he's a creator of the website MyParkFlare.com, where he sells, uh, he offers all types of flair for disney i just got office space rolling in my head <laughs> yeah uh it's going to be a lot of fun you can wear it you can carry it in the parks and far far beyond i can't wait to introduce and welcome to the show adam granis how you doing tonight uh, good thank you for having me how are you guys we're doing great yeah we're hanging in there excited great. it's great so uh we like to ask everybody this question adam it's how did your disney journey begin Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Uh, um, people get pretty surprised, too, when I tell them, actually. Um, my significant other uh, took me to Disneyland for my 30th birthday, and I'm 33 years old uh, and had never been to the parks until my 30th birthday. Wow. Um, yeah, it was um, a life-changing experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, I was a... I was a fan. Yeah, so I was a fan of Disney since I was a kid, and you know, as you get kind of older into your teenage years, I, you know, I kind of you know fell out of it and got real serious. You know, you get serious as a teenager about everything. Um, right. And uh, uh, took me to the parks for my birthday. Got a birthday button, and um, it was probably the best birthday of my entire life, and the most life altering experience. Um, actually, I was um, at a job for almost four years, and after we came back from Disneyland, I actually quit my job and started another job um, about a week later. <laughs> um, suffice it to say, um, that really pushed me to change who I am in a lot of ways. All right. That happened to me, too. Tony's been coming to Disney since he was a kid. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't come to Disney. I mean, I I came one time with my dad when I was 18, and it was it was the um, the post like immediately post divorce trying to win the kid uh, over taking an 18 year old <laughs> to Disney and had no desire to be at Disney. Right. So there's not a lot to remember from that trip, but um, <laughs> I got married and uh, so I'm 35. I got married late and uh, we got con. I mean, we got talked into uh, buying <laughs> passes and mm. my wife and I came to Disney. We went to Epcot and were just blown away just by the whole experience. And then we were so excited. We got up the next day and went to Magic Kingdom. And that's wow. when we were hooked because we had never seen anything like it. So when you say it's a life changing experience, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Mine oh, just wow. happened yeah. earlier. I was only 13. <laughs> <laughs> only 13. <laughs> so you were a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. I was 13. And then we came every year thereafter. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so uh, you know, but the first time was the best time because it was all brand new. It was a brand new adventure. You know, it's just like wow, look at this place. You know, how do they do this every day? Yeah, yeah. You start. I started getting into that as well. You sort of start getting into like, when do they change the light bulbs? Like, right. right. Strange <laughs> questions start to cross your mind. Why after does a the while? paint look perfect every day? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then and then to compound it, once you actually start getting into the history of it, this is where you're in a distinct advantage over Tony and I. You actually get to walk the streets that Walt Disney himself yeah. walked. And, uh, this is true. And a lot of people say that that's the biggest difference for them when they right. go to the Disneyland oh, yeah. park right. is that he was there. Right. Yeah. I cry. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not ashamed to say it. I've talked about this on the <laughs> podcast a lot. The first time, as happened almost every time that I've been, uh, the first thing that oh, I yeah. do is I walk straight to the firehouse and put my hand on the bricks and I, sh yeah. I cry. Uh, oh, wow. Just because of my, you know, love and admiration for Disney and what he did. 
you know, and it's it's the closest that I'll ever get to them, you know. So, oh man! So it's just it's a it's a moving experience. It's, it it's is, powerful. yeah. I mean, it's a seven hour drive for us. So when I come back home, it takes about oh I don't know twelve fourteen hours, and I'm a sobbing mess, mm-hmm. uh, mostly grouchy and sad for like five hours, and then sob uncontrollably for two. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, Tony's uh, Tony when he moved down here, he's been local for a lot longer than I have been not we lived my wife and i lived in tampa it's about an hour and a half away so we would we would pull off property we're like but i don't want to go but it's better than seven hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> we got over it's pretty true. quick <laughs> it's true i'm actually i think there's been like one trip i didn't cry when we came back oh, home no, um, it's, it's, it's that much like you know people say you sort you sort of hear like oh this is home you know this is my home and you're like what is wrong with you and then until you really experience it you you know exactly exactly what they mean when they say that yeah i pick up trash i do too people throw trash down and i'll yeah. pick it up as like this is my house get out of <laughs> <Yeah>. my house <laughs> i do i'm like oh man someone dropped a cup or something i just yeah. pick it up and throw it in the trash yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely so i feel like you got a part <laughs> yeah absolutely. Right. yeah that's right man it's my house i gotta take care of it right so yeah. um tell us how you came upon starting my park flare Okay, so after I had quit my job and started this other one, um, it really pushed me to just change who I was. I was really scared to change jobs. Mm -hmm. It was so petrifying for me. And most people say, you know, that they don't like change and it's hard for everyone. But for some reason, it always felt much, much harder for me to kind of just jump and and do something. So um, uh, we had... um, I had, I had gone back to the park. So that was October of 2014. And then I went back again, October of 2015. No, I'm sorry, January of 2015. Um, that was when there was a real off season <laughs> and um, right. it was nice and quiet. Um, I saw all these buttons kind of everywhere and I thought, wow, these are, these are cool, but they're so plain. You know, I thought this is, you know, the happiest place on earth. Why isn't there, you know, glow in the dark or, or glitter or some kind of cool sparkle or the, you know, these fun finishes for like a birthday. So I actually designed a Jack Skellington birthday button for myself just randomly because I just felt like doing it. You know, I've always customized everything from, very young teenage years, like uh, those clear binders for school. I would put, you know, my own stuff in it and um, uh, create things and print them out. So I did this button and it sort of caught on fire. People sort of said, you know, where the heck did you get that? And I went, I I just made it, you know, (laughs) why? (laughs) You know, I didn't really think anything of it. Um, and it kind of just jumped from there. So I, I made a couple for friends and, um, I, uh, the first, the very next button that I did, that was the first special effect paper finish was actually for paint the night. Um, and I saw it and I knew this was what was going to differentiate me from other shops selling similar items was offering what other people don't have. And that was, um, these special finishes basically. Yeah. Um, so, so when you started, you just did buttons, right? That's all you started with? Yes, that's all I did. Yeah. Just because that was kind of like the thing and, and that was kind of what your focus on. Is there, is there a specific reason it was just buttons as opposed to... You know, you know, I don't know. I just saw it and I thought, you know, if so many people, you know, kind of messaged me and said, this is an awesome button and stopped me in the parks, you know, like every 10 feet. And it was sort of like, OK, clearly I need to be you know, doing something with this if they're you know, not offering it in an official capacity. Right. Um, so I, I just poked around and I have some history in marketing, too. And just to backtrack a little bit, um, I was working another job um, while creating these buttons. Um, and I actually left this job to do my park flare full time. I was kind of backed into a corner to do it. And I will say that was like the worst and best experience probably of my life was sure. just jumping right into this. Um, it was kind of a bad idea in hindsight, but now it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, um, I just was poking around into what other people doing, jumping back to that, um, what other people were doing, seeing who else sells buttons, what they look like. Um, and I just, you know, wanted to kind of um, pave my own way and put, you know, 
um, my own flair on it. And that's kind of where the name came from that idea. But also, um, uh, like I said, office space was that Jennifer Aniston was not wearing a flair. Yeah. So right. it kind of ended up being funny that way. <laughs> right. Right. And I, and I came from a job similar kind of to that place, but not really, but definitely with the weird quirks like that. I think everybody does. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Did you have to wear 763 <laughs> pieces of flair? Thankfully, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we've spoken to other people that have made buttons and uh, some of them make them on demand and some of them, you know, make them in mass quantities, you know, mm -hmm. you know thousands at a time so which one do you do are you making them on demand are you with the special finishes i would think that's a, maybe a little bit harder to it uh, is a bit harder i actually send them out um and have them professionally printed mm -hmm. and um, pressed together um so they are not really made on demand i kind of get them in bulk sizes yeah. um based on performance um and kind of do it that way yeah so then how do you know, like, all right, this design is going to be killer. I'm going to go out and get a thousand of these. <laughs> that That's a pretty big risk, I would um, it Yeah, it can be a little bit. Um, I, you know, I always come across, you know, like cliche sayings, but mm. I, I think they're cliche for a reason is because a lot of times they're true. Like, you can't be afraid to fail. And I think I kind of apply that when it comes to a specific design, you just kind of, I kind of look at it like, okay, I love this. So I know there's going to be a group of people that are going to love this too. And I just kind of put it out into the world and, you know, hope for the best in that way. And I've kind of, you know, learned some things along the way, like poor dear old Minnie Mouse, just, she just, she just can't sell. <laughs> she, oh, really? she was having a hard time moving um, as mm -hmm. far as buttons are concerned. But, um, you know, I, I just kind of take a gamble on it and, and, and kind of see what happens. But I also um, on Instagram in particular, I always ask people, you know, what do you want? What, right. do, what do you want to see? What is going to speak to you that I can create that you can look at this and, and, and appreciate it and enjoy it and enhance, you know, your day or your park going experience or your birthday or whatever it may be. Yeah. And people really jump in, which is so great because that's, you know, really why another ultimately why another reason why I started my park play was to um, not just, you know, kind of keep tabs on the parks, but um, really interact and, and meet people. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I noticed you uh, dipped your toe in the uh, pin, but uh, arena a little bit, which is different than buttons. I but, did. It's yeah, very different. Yeah. They got to go out and get enamel and you have to have the shape die cut oh, yeah. and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 We did that. Uh, uh, we did one for the 40th anniversary of the magic kingdom down here. We, oh, wow. yeah, we did pins. Uh, we did it like a limited edition, I think. Um, and it was a painful process and we, was it? yeah we had a lot of pins left over <laughs> oh no <laughs> we could probably tough. use them for the 50th still <laughs> yeah yeah um you know with that i would say you know you kind of just have to figure out what your quantity is how many you think and then yeah. um i you know people sometimes do and sometimes don't like it but um uh, pre-orders you know is really kind of a good way to gauge mm. uh, how well you know it's going to perform overall and whether or not you need 200 or five or a thousand you know right. so have you ever stepped back and, and looked at all the designs you've created and counted them up I have. I actually, I have a, um, the Vans, Mickey Vans shoe box, um, the black one with the really cool gold foiling on it, right. um, has every one of every button I've made in it. Oh, wow. wow. Oh. So yeah. I, I, I pull them out and look at it and I, 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 I try to outdo myself usually. Right. So what's the number if I can be. <laughs> I don't know how many is in the shoe box. Um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's like 50 to a hundred in there. I'm not totally okay. sure. Um, since I've only been kind of going about two years or so. Huh, okay. Right. So what, what do you think is the, well, what is the most popular selling one you've done so far? The most popular one, uh, the beauty and the beast, uh, stained glass sparkle one is probably the most popular. Oh, wow. nice. Yeah. That one was rather hard to keep in stock yeah. <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I People, think I, I think I've seen that in the park too, now that you mention it. Uh, have you? Yeah. Have you? I That's awesome. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I that was kind of um 
Uh, in truth, that was kind of the last Disney movie I saw with my, my grandmother when I was, I think, oh gosh, the third, maybe fourth grade or something like that, um, that I saw with her. So I, I really have, um, a, a good and deep connection to that animated feature. Yeah. yeah. To that, cool. to that particular Disney movie. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the thing, especially when you're creating something, you know, I, I, I'm not at the same level, but I do graphic arts and stuff. And, you know, if you're passionate about something, uh, it reflects in the work, all your work oh, is, is really stellar. Thank and, you. I appreciate that. That's so kind. Thank you. You know, Tony and I see a lot <laughs> of Disney stuff. So, right. you know, uh, your stuff stands out. So yeah, it's, it's amazing when you see someone who's, who's got the talent in the eye and, you know, just, just scrolling through my park com is just so many amazing designs and, uh, just, just the buttons alone. Of course you've got t-shirts and stuff. Uh, tell us a yeah. little bit about the apparel that you sell. Oh gosh, what would you like to know about the apparel <laughs> in particular? Uh, well, uh, you know, we can start with the t-shirts. What, what, so tell me, well, here's how to start. Tell us the progression. You started with buttons. Mm -hmm. and then I did. Um, and from there, I, I, you know, I, I saw, um, some interesting looking t-shirts at the parks that families wear sometimes and, um, not to say anything negative, but sometimes they're highly questionable <laughs> in design. <laughs> oh yeah. That is such a nice way of putting it. Like their kids yeah. did it. <laughs> Yeah. And I kind of, um, I wouldn't say that I think negatively about it. I'm, I, and it comes from a graphic design standpoint. I kind of critique everything that I see design wise, like a company's, um, like bus stop sign or something. And I look at it and go, Oh gosh, what the heck were you thinking with that? Sure. <laughs> you know, right, that totally. color should be lighter blue <laughs> or right. something is equally stupid. Right. Yeah. So I see a lot of shirts and go, okay, that could have been good had you, you know, and I, I you know, I'll kind of poke my significant other or a friend and be like, they should have added like this to that or, you know, kind of whatever. You kind of start formulating it in your head. And I don't know who it was. I think it might have been my significant other said, you know, you really should try shirts uh, try a design you know just kind of do one or two stick it out there and see what happens mm -hmm. so what did you start yeah. with what was your first shirt design oh man sorry. <sighs> i don't sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to remember um I th I think it was the boo to you Mickey pumpkin shirt is what it was right. I think I'm pretty sure and then um, there was one that said um, all about that pumpkin spice Disney life yeah. I think it was yeah. But yeah um everybody really liked that because I'm I can be kind of basic at times and also you know much more you know unique but <laughs> I mean you get to Starbucks and it's kind of like you know I I love their pumpkin frappuccino and um, um, the uh, uh, pumpkin latte, right. ice pumpkin latte. So I'm also a super, super huge fan of Halloween too, ever since I was a kid. So anything pumpkin and Halloween kind of together um, and then experiencing Halloween time at Disneyland, you know, it's kind of like, okay, this is, you know, a freak sanctuary. <laughs> right. 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 So do the buttons designs inspire the shirts? Do the shirts inspire the buttons? Is it a are they connected? Uh, are they connected? Do you make a button and then go, hey, I'm going to make this a shirt, too? Occasionally, yeah. Occasionally. Um, you know, like the um, the Think of a Wonderful Thought pin started mm -hmm. just as a glow-in-a-dark button. And then someone said, dude, I want that on a shirt. And I'm like, I don't, okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't really think anything of it. I didn't think that'd be a good idea. And it you know, it turns out people did want it. So yeah. sometimes, you know, my judgment isn't always the best when it comes to, you know, what somebody would want. And I end up being kind of pleasantly surprised. Yeah. The, the one good thing about being in the position that you're in is you can jump on trends and fads much faster than, than Disney. <laughs> yeah. Can. yeah. Oh, God. Rose gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so have you had your rose gold churro yet? <laughs> I haven't, but I, they have this amazing one, um, the marshmallow graham cracker one. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Yeah, it's a graham cracker one. It's like rolled in graham cracker bits, and then there's a marshmallow chocolate dipping sauce, and it's surprisingly really good. I can get on with that fad. <laughs> nice. Wow. So have you, uh, have you jumped on a fad pretty quick and then, like, 
couple of months later, Disney's kind of not necessarily copied you, but done their version of it. And you're like, oh, wow, look at that. Uh, not only was I first, but it was probably better. Um, you know, not me and specifically, but some of the other shops I have seen, you know, kind of they look at something and go, oh, you know what? That's a really good idea. And they're in a position to be like, well, we can just do whatever we want because it's ours. So there's yeah. not a lot you can really do about it. But I, I've seen them jump on not only similar designs, but, you know, the trend bad wagon and kind of vice versa. Other shops kind of you know, like the spirit jerseys. I've seen that inspired on a couple of other shops, a few name dropping places like foolish mortal supply co. And, mm. um, I, I'm trying to think of all the pretty little monograms, you know, I kind of keep tabs on what a lot of the other shops are doing and try to support them as best I can. The, uh, the list t-shirts, I think they sell them down here in Disney world. Maybe not those lists, but something similar to them. So maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe they've been, Steal some of your stuff. <laughs> I actually saw the, a turkey leg one when I was just yes. there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. That's what we need. Anyway, turkey leg. <laughs> I know. I'm like, that's not, it's, I mean, there's been debates about whether or not that's real turkey, I heard. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, we've heard it's been ostrich and it's, all it's, it's turkey. <laughs> and it's, it's turkey. As far as you know, it's turkey. Uh, sure. <laughs> it's turkey. So, so we came out of buttons, we did t shirts. Yeah, um, yeah. And then what was the next? Non button item that you started so because you've got stuff like phone um, cases, yeah, phone cases, phone, yeah, because I I love phone cases and I've always loved phone cases and usually it was kind of um, a tradition to pick up a new one when we visit the park and I would go through them and be like you know they're neat why isn't there like something relatively like just a plain pattern you know or like. Mm why isn't there like waffles? Everybody loves the Mickey waffles or, um, why isn't there, um, like just the plain haunted mansion wallpaper on a phone case, you know, and, and have it be clear because a lot of people kind of like the idea of a clear case. And it turns out that, you know, it didn't really stay as a fad. It kind of has continued to carry on. And, you know, people are kind of torn about, um, I want, you know, otter box protection versus it's way too bulky and I want it more slim. I'm kind of, like I'm not accident prone so I like a slim you know um, much more tailored to a fashion case instead of a bulky one Mm -hmm. but I know friends that like drop kick it 50 yards and they (laughs) they have to have an otter box (laughs) we totally had that conversation earlier today yeah Yeah, I saw that yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'm the clumsy one. Tony's like the oh look at this. This is nice, yeah. dainty, yeah, <laughs> trendy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like no man. I gotta have a freaking Sherman tank. <laughs> yeah, you need to be able to drop kick it, drop it in the my toilet, God, blow it out, hand. glue to wash my it hand. in the washing machine. Yeah. I have to nickname it, uh, you know, Nagin, and just beat it with a bat and just be done. <laughs> my, I gotta That's survive, a, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna survive the apocalypse for you. That's right. That's too funny. Uh, so phone cases was the yeah, natural prog- progression just in general, you know, and kind of putting what I love on it, which was like usually Mickey waffles is like a go to every trip. Having a Mickey ice cream was like a go to every trip, you know, Dole Whip. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about because I kind of do like it and I kind of don't like it only because I've never loved pineapple in general. But I know a lot of other people do. So, yeah, that that's fighting words down here. Right. It, I mean, you guys have a really cool citrus swirl, though, so I would be on board with that. Uh, it's good. Yeah. It's totally good. good. Yeah. yeah. It sounds amazing. It sounds very refreshing. Yeah. It's almost, for me, a little bit better than a Dole Whip, and I know that's going to sound ludicrous to a lot of people. <laughs> Blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have to revoke your yeah. Disney card, buddy. Yeah. The, uh, the thing about Dole Whip is is you just have to get the right amount of rum in it, and then it's all good. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it That's a like personal that preference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's funny. So tell us, uh, uh, I also noticed that you also have a, a selection of hat, hats, and some of them are, speaking of Dole Whip, Dole Whip, King and Queen. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So uh, how did these uh, come about, too, from the phone case? Did you go to hats then, or... Um, how does it fit in? Yeah, I mean, a, a friend of mine was saying that there wasn't that great of hats, and yeah. they've really kind of stepped up their game, and so have a couple of other shops with that. Mm. Um, I just thought, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I just thought, you know, like there's got to be like guys and girls out there that are like. 
dude, I'm the toilet king. Like, yeah. they wait in line. They probably get more than one. And I just kind of, you know, I'm kind of like that in my life in general. Like, right. paint the night. I could, I don't know if you watch Family Guy. Um, I love all kinds of shows. But, um, you know, uh, Peter Griffin listens to um, Birds the Word like <laughs> 400 times. That is me with, like, any favorite song, mm. favorite movie. Um, so, paint the night. I could listen to it 400 times until my significant other ears are like bleeding and he's like please make it stop <laughs> right and yeah my, so my I think well, there's those hardcore people out there like that they're, that's kind of where Dole Queen came from was that they just love it and I can get on board with that feeling sorry go ahead my wife is uh, that way with the uh, greatest showman soundtrack right now oh see I hear people love that hmm. it's we both come from a, a drama theater background and it's great and I love it but I can't do it 24-7 <laughs> you know, yeah. and she's huh. like every night. I'm like, honey, just wow. You know, here, watch this. What's it called? It's called Wolverine. <laughs> you get wow. the best of both worlds. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, totally Hugh Jackman. <laughs> so, um, just what's been the one big thing that you started my park flare? Uh, you know, to get your designs out. Obviously, you know. Um, we all trying to earn a living doing what we do, but what's been the biggest surprise that you've, you've had since you started uh, the website? Cause usually for us, for Tony and I, you know, we've, we've been surprised not only in just, you know, we've made friends, Tony and I became friends and started this podcast mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. both of us started our blogs. And, you know, when you, when you open yourself up and you let the Disney community become part of your life in the way that, that we all have, you know, amazing things happen. So has there been a moment like that for you since you started my park Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've stumbled across some amazing people, um, on, on Instagram alone that sort of said, you know, I love your shop. Are you going to be in the parks or I'll announce I'm going to be in the parks. And, you know, they're like, Oh, I want to meet you. I want to meet you. You know, like, um, happiest teas on earth, uh, you know, is super nice to me on Instagram. And, um, there's a couple of other people. Magic mouse ears is phenomenal on there. Um, you know, I met some, some girlfriends that are, um, come, kind of become friends with me over time. Um, like Mallory, um, she's technically a brand rep, but, um, you know, she and, and other people really have just surprised me and blown me away with, um, their niceness and, and generosity, um, and, and care. Um, and my friend Donna, I met because of the Disney parks. Um, I met her there. Um, she was a fan of the, of, um, my park flare and, um, she was so sweet and we bonded so quickly and I'm continually amazed by the doors that the park opens, the friendships that it creates, the support level that comes out of it. Um, I, Never in my wildest dreams did I think that, you know, such a thing could be possible, to be honest. Do you uh, ever bump into people with your merch on and say, hey, I made that there? Sometimes, yeah. The first time it happened, we were leaving the restrooms near... A carnation cafe coming out and a girl was sitting at the table mm. and I, I just dead stopped in my tracks and it was the most bizarre feeling in the entire world. But, you know, having a graphic design background, you know, I've, I've, I've had stuff printed and, yeah. um, you know, uh, and created for companies and things like that, but never my own stuff in such a way that it was, you know, apparel or, or something. So, you know, I looked at my significant other and went, holy crap, she's wearing one of the shirts that I designed. And it was so surreal at that moment because I think of this as just something so small. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think about it like, you know, 300 people have this button, you know, and they could yeah. very well that many people do. And it's, it, it's weird and so humbling and, 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 and I'm, I'm so appreciative of that. Um, and I think that, you know, that's kind of like the greatest gift you get from being a graphic designer is seeing kind of your, your creation sort of, um, you know, it's like a baby, it, you know, it's alive and in the world now. <laughs> right. So where do you see, uh, my park flare going? What do you, what's the future for my park flare? You have any, um, uh, stuff that you want to share? 
expansion plans? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm really stepping up the t-shirt game. You know, I know I, I, I constantly kind of improve myself. Like the Dole Whip button, I just did a brand new variation of that because. Um, I don't want to stagnate, you know, I don't want the same button to be there for like two years or something. And, you know, I, I kind of, you know, as you grow as a person and as, you know, a designer, you kind of want to keep things, you know, fresh, uh, and exciting and build upon kind of what you've done. So that's kind of what I've been doing is taking an audit of things and going, okay, how can this be improved? Do I even like this? Do other people like this? You know, then you get into the ugly part of it that I don't enjoy, which is like how well does this sell, you know, yeah, like right. I don't like that part of it. Um, I definitely prefer the more creative part of it. And I prefer the interactive part of it, the meeting people. So what I'm doing is just, working on more shirts, working on more phone cases, seeing if I can outdo myself. I would, I've been talking about doing, um, a holographic sticker, you know, kind of like the world of color one is it's a silverish, like rainbow holographic kind of paper finish to it. Mm. And I've been thinking about doing maybe like a sticker or, um, uh, I've been also thinking about doing uh, a lenticular button, which is I'm sure I'm sure you've seen this before. Mm -hmm. It's two different images as you move the object. Yeah, That's I've been thinking about doing something like that. You know, something a little bit different. Okay. You do Magic Band covers when they come to Disneyland. You know, that would be great. They really freaking need them, too. <laughs> People say, like, there's no hotel. And I'm like, oh, man, dude, like Just the amount of times I take on my wallet or, you yeah. know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or your fast pass for, you know, for the ride. You need to scan, uh, not the fast pass, you need to scan your annual pass or, yeah. you know, your, your ticket or whatever. Right. And it would be so much faster for those of us that kind of go there a lot. And, you know, like you really know the drill, like usually like Space Mountain has two and mm -hmm. it would just be easier to be like, ba bing, you know, each time. Right. Yeah, definitely. Plus, definitely. plus they're fashionable. Like I want yeah. 40 of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I would love Come like a Florida. Like, <laughs> um, Careful I know. You ask for See, and be ready for what you get. <laughs> hmm, sorry, say that again. Careful for what you ask for and be ready for what you get. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's been very interesting. We were promised a whole lot of things. Oh, really? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, the fast yeah. pass, you know, the, the magic bands, you know. Hi, John. Thanks for writing It's a Small World or Happy Birthday, Tony. Or, yeah. You know, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. They were supposed to call us by name on the attractions and it hasn't happened. Yeah, that, that hasn't happened. <laughs> really? No. Yeah. No. No. I've heard about this, but I didn't hear it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah, it didn't happen. And if you're staying on property, like if you if you're vacationing, you can put a credit card, you know, and if you're buying something at a you know got quick service or gift you know shop. a gift shop or something, you can like plunk, hit your magic band and it pays for it. If you're a pass holder, you can't do that. Yeah. So hmm. you still have to pull out the wallet and pay for it with a credit card. Oh yeah. wow! Nobody understands kind of why they can't make that happen for us. But. Yeah, considering all of our my Disney Experience accounts have a credit card tied to it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they do yeah. have the information. Yeah. They just haven't chosen to use. It yet. And it's every trip to Walt Disney World. So a little bit of background for me. I was a marketing director for a travel agency for a number of years. So oh, I've wow. been to Disney resorts a lot. And every trip I got a different magic band. So I've got a box full of like 30, 40 <laughs> okay. magic bands. I don't feel bad about my 40 magic bands comment then. <laughs> yeah, no, huh? <laughs> no. No. But after but the problem is 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 you have to literally go in and turn your magic bands off and delete them from your account. Uh, oh wow! Every, every time? time? Well, not every time, but you know, once you once get you up, hit a limit, once you hit a certain limit, they can't mm. issue you another magic band. How many is the limit? Uh, yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. <laughs> but I know, I know, I had fifteen at one time on my account. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, wow! It, you know, it, it's 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 cool, but it's not a perfect system yet. Yeah, it seems like a lost opportunity that it's not linked to you know like your bank account or your you know your visa or whatever you have. Well, that's not even the half of it. You know, we have this discount card for dining. It's called Tables in Wonderland. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not linked to that. My DVC account's not on it. My D23 uh, membership's not on it. So there's a lot of things they can do to make it better. But yeah, that that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I don't mind talking about it with yeah. you guys. We don't have to talk about just me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let's uh, do this. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you and uh, all your great products that you're selling, Adam. 
Um, you can find it at uh, myparkflare.com. Um, and you can also check us out on Instagram. That's kind of where it's growing right now because Facebook is kind of dying out slowly. But mm. it's uh, instagram.com backslash myparkflare. And you can come over there and check out the photos of people wearing buttons and shirts and interact with some of the other great, amazing people I've met on there. And I would love to have you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I may buy a couple buttons. <laughs> Because it's that would be great. You don't have to buy any. I will absolutely send you guys some. I Aww. I found a couple I like. I we have no problem supporting you. That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. I want to support you guys back. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, did you guys see too that? Um, getting off topic, that uh, Disneyland was renovating their tracks. I saw that the Main Street uh, trolley tracks, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, for the horse-drawn carriage. Yeah. How bad is the construction because that's a major so, overhaul yeah we were just there at the end of january um and the walls kind of like kept getting closer and closer and closer from like where the partner statue is wow. it was kind of wow. like a way in the very front very front at the very end close entrance to disneyland and then there was kind of a gap for a little bit and then the wall would start but they were moving it a little bit each day and uh finally the partner statue area where the castle is mm. uh the walls came down and the bricks are now there oh wow mm. I, one of my ocd friends was like the bricks are different colors than the sidewalk <laughs> <laughs> oh, like OCD. Paint <laughs> yeah, we heard that they're making the i think the track a little bit wider and a little bit deeper and that is to make it easier for the horse to pull uh the trolley right now they're very short and they're very narrow mm. and it's harder yeah. apparently for the the poor horses mm. yeah and they um surprisingly the trolley like squeals a lot yes. as it goes around certain areas mm. it makes this horrible high pitch sound yeah <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if I you in your dreams. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if replacing the tracks was, you know, for that reason, the, the sound and the smoothness of the of the trolley going yeah. through. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Because I, I know they're old. Yeah. You guys are getting some uh, pretty cool things. Uh, Pixar Pier is coming to you guys. Yeah. In June. Uh, yeah. Paint the night. Then you have the, uh, I think, the parade, too. Uh, yeah. The Pixar Fest is going to yes. be starting at Disneyland. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So is that I hope it's an improved um, parade too. I hope it's not the same one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least you have a parade. We oh, don't that's have, true. We have no nighttime parades in you any don't. of our parks. No. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why you guys don't. We sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, they stole paint the night from themselves. They plagiarized themselves. Yeah. That came from like Hong Kong. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, some minor I, modifications are, you know, they keep telling us the main difference between, you know, your parks and our parks is, you know, we're quote a world destination. Uh, so I would think that you would probably put your best foot forward in a world destination, but yeah. apparently not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, that it's, makes a, sense. Yeah. it's a constant source of frustration for both Tony and I, we just sit and like, we read stories from all over the world and Disney's Disneyland Paris is adding this Hong Kong. Disney's adding this Disneyland's getting this. And we're just like, we get Star Wars land. We get two rides for Star Wars. We get two rides for Toy for Story. Toy Story. We get Toy two Story rides. land? Question mark. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just sit there and go, okay. Yeah. You know. Nobody, I guess this is all we're getting. Nobody but, loves us. Nobody right. loves us. I'm surprised they just didn't bring back Main Street Electrical Parade to there because I know that is a beloved parade. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I mean, it's it's gone away and come back and gone away and come back. So a couple times. when you look at the level of parade that they do at the three o'clock parade, which is a festival of fantasy parade, mm -hmm. and then you couple that with how amazing the paint the night parade is, yeah, nothing against Main Street Electrical, it's just we need something better, yeah. you know, yeah, but, for sure, you need an updated parade. That's a yeah. topic for another. Well, day. you may see us in twenty nineteen. We may come up with the D twenty three Expo. So heck yeah, that would be great. Yeah, have you been to any of the uh, expos? I haven't, but my friends have gone, um, yeah. not, I think, last year, but the year before. And uh, now I want to go. <laughs> uh, I will tell you this. Set up a table. Sell some buttons. You know, I don't. Are they going to murder me there? <laughs> like copyright infringement? We've thought about the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get a table next to you. And if it happens, it'll happen to both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to just like restrict it to certain designs. I mean, because technically everybody that has stuff is kind of infringing a little bit. I, I think so. I 
we've been to the expo a couple times and the area that everybody's selling their stuff i think everybody's on the fringe a little bit right uh, yeah, I know there's one shop that actually last year got licensed. Um, oh, really? I, I don't know want to particularly say the name, but yeah. um, if it's allowed, but um, they were called Cake Worthy. They got licensed. Um, and uh, I I don't know what that process is, but ultimately I would love to do that. So I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the only problem that with good. that is you lose control. I know. Yeah. I don't know how much they do or don't. You know, I've been kind of needing to have a conversation with them about that. Um, they have a, an amazing shop and they use a lot of face characters and different things for different merchandise. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure you have to give them a little kickback too. It was probably <laughs> some money before royalties or something. Yeah. And I know licensing we, fee. Yeah. 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 We may edit this part out, but before you make that decision, <laughs> let's have an off air conversation <laughs> and I'll tell you about some of my time being a marketing director yeah, that'd be great. For a top seven Disney travel company and the hoops that we had to jump through and we were selling Disney for Disney by Disney and it was insane. Yeah. Oh, wow. So before you yeah, pull feel, free fingers, to, feel free to edit, edit whenever you want or whatever you need to. <laughs> right. Right. So other than that, thank you so much for taking time. And uh, no, thank you. Conversation. It was a pleasure. It's always fun meeting new people. And if you're ever over here in Walt Disney World, please let us know because we would love to meet you. And, uh, ah, you know, we always we always want to throw out, you know, first drinks on us. Yeah. Oh, that would, that would be great. That'd be amazing. Um, I'd love to come back with you guys and discuss other stuff any other, anytime you want. OK, well, I'd love to have you. All right, so don't forget, uh, check out Adam at myparkflare.com. He's got all his great stuff there. And as we'd like to say around here, we'll see you in the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you.